Welcome to Right Voices. My name is Drew Bond and I am the president and CEO of C3 Solutions. C3 Solutions is the conservative coalition for climate solutions. And at C3 Solutions, we believe in highlighting and really promoting uh, free market solutions to the world's greatest climate, energy and environment challenges. This is a Right Voices interview. It's a live interview with some of the most influential free market climate, energy, and environment leaders from around the world. C3 Solutions is proud to host this and other interviews as a part of our nonprofit educational mission. To learn more, please visit us and subscribe to our free newsletter at c3newsmag.com. With that, let me introduce our special guest, Heather Reams. Heather is the executive director for the Citizens for Responsible Energy Solutions, otherwise known as CRESS. Heather, welcome. How are you? Hey, great. Drew, wonderful to be with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so glad to have you and uh, so excited about next week. Uh, and so obviously one of the topics that we want to really focus on is the National Clean Energy Week. But before we do that, um, you know, I think it'd be good for folks that maybe have not heard from you Tell us a little bit about you and tell us a little bit about CRESS and, and how did you get involved in this? Yeah, Citizens for Responsible Energy Solutions, or CRESS, uh, has been around for about eight years, and I've been uh, leading it for um, about five years now. Uh, and you think, you think about what's happened in clean energy and climate in five years, it's been considerable. So uh, and thinking about how Republicans and, and Democrats are now talking about solutions and coming at it differently. Um, I came at it as someone who's who cares about the environment, but also I have, I'm a mom, I have two children. Um, and you know, there's something about wanting to leave the world better than when you found it. And uh, it, it just made sense to help Republicans get on um, a pathway that's authentically Republican, but uh, you know, being a party that's, uh, that are doers, we know Republicans are doers. They want to solve solutions, tough, tough, tough issues with good solutions. So it just, it seemed like a, kind of almost the mission impossible at first, a challenge, and then uh, became very realistic that the, this members of Congress, for instance, want to engage on climate. They just don't want to deal with the alarmism we hear from the left. They, they, they have a different kind of approach and it's going to be free market based rather than command and control. Uh, so th that that really made that resonated with me uh, as, as a conservative and wanting to stick to principles uh, as conservatives, but also how do we how do we find how do we make it a political win and also a policy win? And I think Republicans are starting to find their way. And, and CRESS has been one of the organizations that's been helping to lead Republicans in thinking about um, climate and clean energy policy in a different way. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really really important. Uh, and and congratulations. I mean, I can't believe you, it's been five years. No. <laughs> uh, that is amazing. And uh, and for our viewers out there, I mean, Heather really has been. Uh, instrumental in, uh, in the Citizens for Responsible Energy Solutions uh, ability to really educate and, and influence, you know, the policy discussion. Uh, so, you know, from that perspective, I mean, you mentioned Republicans a lot, and I just want to clarify or make sure that our folks understand, like, are, are you a Republican organization or a distinctly free market conservative? I know a lot of people use those words interchangeably. Right, right, right. Fair, fair enough. Uh, well, I'm I'm wearing my my crest hat now. That are now, and we are a right of center organization. We focus mostly on working with Republicans, and certainly we're working um, with Democrats where it makes sense. But we've also talked about you know, helping Republicans engage authentically on, on climate uh, and clean energy, and that that has its own lane of work. Um, that's really important. I think it's bringing Republicans to the table, helping them realize they should have a place at the table, and then now being at the table, what to advocate for. So now you're, you are starting to see this difference of approaches between Republicans and Democrats. doesn't mean one is right over the other every time. Um, I think this is where you start to see the competition of ideas, and we'll start to see policy evolve in ways that are really going to be uh, probably more bipartisan. Uh, it should be more bipartisan, uh, just like any other major issue that, that, that Congress is trying to tackle. So, you know, I guess I'd say we're a right of center organization, uh, but recognizing that we, we had some work to do on the right to bring Republicans at, really at the table strongly and wanting to be at the table. And now that that's, for the most part, we're there we're really starting to start to really dig into the policy. I think that's where we are now. And that's why it's interesting wearing my other hat as the chair of National Clean Energy Week. 
um, and helping pull that together. Um, this was something that my org, my nonprofit side of uh, the C3 organization, Crest Forum, uh, had a kind of a, we had a th thinking. I was kind of like, what if we did something that really helps bring Republicans and Democrats together in a way that could be authentically both of them? Like, there's a lot of low hanging fruit here and talking about thinking about innovation, thinking about global competitiveness. You know, what can we do as it's been more of a partisan organization to bring other organizations together, invite policymakers and have productive dialogue. Uh, so it was like, well, where's the awareness week for, for clean energy? And uh, they said, well, let's, there's Earth, Earth Day. I'm like, ah, Earth Day. I mean, that's just a day. And it's, it's so big. What about the clean energy and thinking about the advancements of clean energy and talking about the technology and talking about what policy barriers there are for advancement of clean energy? Uh, and there was nothing. There was nothing. Um, and there's a day for everything, Drew. There's a day for donuts and martinis and, you know, all kinds of illnesses and everything. So why not Clean Energy Week? So yeah. um, we decided to create it. And now we're in our fifth year. And it's been um, obviously wildly popular. But I think really been, we think about the kind of dialogue that's been happening in the past five years and the shifts on talking about clean energy and climate with Republicans and Democrats. You, we really start to see a lot of engagement. And I think Clean Energy Week in part has been part of that, really being big tent, all the above energy, talking about reducing emissions. If you like clean energy, you like Clean Energy Week, um, engage how you may. So it, I think it's been overall just very positive, bringing policymakers to the table who are saying, Republicans saying climate change is happening and we need to do something about it. But it doesn't mean I want big government to come in and solve it. Uh, so I think that we really started that competition of ideas kind of around the fringes with Clean Energy Week. And now we're walking into our fifth year. I think we're going to see some some really interesting um, you know, areas of, of, of agreement, but also some differences of opinion. And we should expect that. And we embrace it at Clean Energy Week. Well, like you said, I, I love the, the, the wording uh, competition of ideas, because, I mean, essentially what, what, I, what I hear you saying is you're not asking for conservatives or Republicans to to give in or give up on their principles per se, right? But rather to come to the table to kind of, you know, thoughtfully, civilly argue for your position. And ultimately we're all kind of in favor of cleaner, better, leaving this place better than we found it, as you mentioned. And so I just think there's a lot of room for agreement there if we approach this in a right way. Um, and again, I think, you know, the Clean Energy Week, National Clean Energy Week has been an important uh, part of that, shaping that discussion. I've actually been there from the beginning as a as a participant. And so I've seen it grow. Um, and, you know, even uh, my recollection is, you know, maybe it was last year or the year before, you know, a panel discussion with uh, Senator Manchin and Senator Murkowski, two very influential members, um, you know, in the energy and climate discussion. Uh, so. Anyway, with that, um, I, I'm just sort of, you know, uh, maybe spiking the ball a little bit for you in terms of the importance <laughs> of Clean Energy Week. But uh, I, I want to maybe get to this year's event and tell us. So it's next week. What should we expect? Uh, who, who will we see there? And uh, and how do we get involved? Oh, yeah. Well, lots there. So first of all, I'll just make sure your viewers know uh, nationalcleanenergyweek.org is where you can find all this information. So if you don't feel like you got to write it down or listen too many times, but nationalcleanenergyweek.org has, it's your depot for all information, National Clean Energy Week. And there's also social media attached to that as well. Uh, so National Clean Energy Week has lots of different components and it grows over the years. Uh, I think the, the kind of hallmark event we, we try to do each year is a policymakers symposium. Um, COVID has made it so virtual is the way to go for these types of events. We did our first virtual event last year, and we'll have it again this year, a virtual event on uh, next, next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, uh, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Uh, we'll have six panels and a number of speakers. Uh, Senator Murkowski will be speaking again, and we've invited a number of members from the administration as well. Uh, this is the first time with Clean Energy Week we've had... Um, non-Trump era, right? so the Biden era. Uh, so it was you know, talking to, you know, letting this administration know this is a, this is middle ground here to, to come and speak. Uh, so we've got a number of folks coming over from the Department of Energy, Department of State, um, wanting to think about the international components now that uh, we're re-engaging in the, in the climate agreements. 
Um, so we've got uh, those days. And then we also are, governors are also sending, signing proclamations recognizing National Clean Energy Week. Usually it's 30 or so governors that's saying it's Clean Energy Week and talking about what they're doing in states. Uh, we also have a number, about 150 participating organizations, C3 being one of them, uh, just talking about clean energy. So we just want to elevate uh, clean energy and, and however each organization wants to do that. We also have a steering committee of 15 members, you know, dealing with um, Solar Association, um, Clean Power Association, Hydro, um, Natural Gas, you name it. They're, they're all, all across the board, all the above, talking about how they're contributing to a cleaner environment through their energy innovation and programs. Um, we'll also have a dinner and a gala. Um, got, it can't be, it's in DC. If it's in DC, you gotta have a dinner. We've been missing our dinners in DC. <laughs> Uh, well, we uh, have a gala discussion again um, with, I think we have a surprise keynote speaker. I'm not supposed to mention yet. Oh, wow. So yeah, okay. a surprise well, keynote speaker. Tell us, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> Next Thursday, um, switching my, my hats also, uh, CRESS, uh, my Citizens for Responsible Energy Solutions, awards our clean energy champion awards next week. And then there's a lot of uh, other events that are going on. They're all on our calendar, um, on the community calendar on nationalcleanenergyweek.org, but lots of great events with uh, different you know, organizations um, that are having their own events just to recognize Clean Energy Week. So not to mention, I'll just say it's, it's, a, it's a rocking time here in Washington with uh, infrastructure and reconciliation discussions. Uh, Congress has been in recess. They're coming, uh, House has been in recess. They're coming back in session next week. So it is going to be a hop in week in Washington for the next couple of weeks. So Clean Energy Week is going to be center of all of this too. So it'll be, I think, a catalyst for a lot of discussions, um, probably some breaking news as well, which is pretty cool. But I'll, specifically with some of the um, some of the days we, we've got a number of panels and each day is has thematic panels uh so on tuesday we're focusing on innovation uh and the low carbon breakthroughs really and then uh on wednesday we're looking at you know addressing some of the challenges and we'll have panels on uh, critical minerals so supply chains um and then how energy is part of infrastructure there's been this the discussion about what is infrastructure human infrastructure versus like hardened infrastructure uh, you know, maintaining the energy is very much part of our infrastructure. Imagine if the lights go out. We know, we know it's, uh, it's important. And then finally on Thursday, we'll be talking about uh, the international climate, talking about COP, and then talking about uh, U.S. policy. What we, what we, how do, can we leverage U.S. policy uh, to improve um, environmental outcomes all around the world? Oh, that's great. What a yeah. just action-packed uh several days. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, two things that, that, that bring questions to mind. So, you know, one is U.S. policy and, um, you know, so much of the discussions in Washington these days is all about spending. And um, and so, you know, of course, there's there's a need for spending and in some infrastructure. There's arguments about what is and isn't infrastructure, as you mentioned. Um, but what about the other aspect of that, which is sort of cutting red tape? Is there room for middle ground where Republicans and Democrats can agree uh, that there's a need to actually reduce red tape in order to accelerate the deployment of clean energy. Yeah, I think that's like where you kind of talk about the devil in details, right? I mean, I think everyone can say, yes, we need to do that, but then it's how you do it. And let's, let's remember that um, if you're thinking about the left, for instance, it is not just like the right. Um, it isn't like you're one flavor. Uh, they're, not, they're not a homogeneous lot of, of one kind who thinks a certain way. So while the clean energy industry can be very supported, there may be um, an endangered species or something that's it, it has a, an issue with uh, building the road that is a threatening a wetland. There's, there's a lot of pieces into our, our um, and how we're building that, that go into this. So there's usually some interest group in some way that's protecting something and has a specific interest that's being overlooked. So with anything, there are winners and losers, right? And and, you're, and ideally, you're more winning than losing. And I think that's one of the challenges we have. I think that, like I said, the red tape, who who wants more government bureaucracy? But we do need some process to make sure we're, we're, we're doing the right things environmentally, they're sound. And I think this, this is a great issue with like critical minerals, for instance, and in mining in the United States. 
uh, versus doing it abroad. I mean, most of the things that we build or mine or, or um, manage in the United States is done more cleanly than it is in any other part of the, of the world because of our strong environmental laws. So if you think about mining in the United States, we're going to do it more cleanly than it would be in, say, Africa or, say, in China. Um, our labor standards will be stronger, as, and that's been in the news a lot. But you, do you want to be mining? Is it a beautiful thing to see mining in the hillside? Um, you know, off, off uh, of an interstate that's a vista that's beautiful. No, it, it's not. So we have to pick you know, what, are, what are our priorities? And we know like with renewable energy, we need more rare earth minerals and critical minerals. We need those and they, we need to source them somewhere. Unfortunately, most of them are coming from China uh, or they're coming from the Congo in Africa or other nations that some are hostile. So how do we secure these supply chains here at home? How do we have things here, here but also recognize um, we're doing them more cleanly, but we're doing them domestically. So these are some of the challenges uh, that we have of, of like, how do we be so aggressive in lowering emissions without the right materials to be able to do it? What, what do we do? And we're really in a conundrum in some of these places where it should be an obvious answer. And I feel like we're like, goldfish, you know, and we're not blinking on each side of the aisle. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this panel to talk about this. I think also getting the Biden administration, we've heard the, the, by the Secretary of Energy very much leaning in and all the above, very much leaning into um, aggressive timelines, though, by 2030, 2035. Um, but what does that mean if we don't have the critical minerals it takes to build um, the type and doing the kind of manufacturing we need to do here in the United States. So I think, you know, I'd like hearing from industries, hearing from uh, the administration, hearing from members of Congress, and, and maybe there's maybe there's something we can work out. I'd love to see. I know we all want to see it. <laughs> uh, but these are like, I guess it's it's really hard unless you're in the the trenches and something like this to understand what it means. But we all have went gone through COVID. We know how important it is with supply chains of being able to get certain materials from China, for instance, or if the Suez Canal is blocked by a massive ocean liner and where our supply chains are disrupted just from just the shipping. We know that it's important. We know that much. So I think it makes sense to say, you know, what are we going to do as a country? How are we going to use trade? And who are we trading with? Um, and are they maintaining the values that we have here in the United States, particularly when it comes to human rights? Yeah, wow. It's, uh, I mean, it sounds like you guys are going to cover the gamut, everything from like investing in energy innovation to all the above technologies to how do we deal with the, the minutia policy and the fact that, you, as you point out, there is no silver bullet policy even uh, for these and, and then you talk about, you know, global leadership. You mentioned COP earlier. Now, some folks may not know what COP is, uh, but, you know, the, the Conference of Parties meeting, this, uh, this you know, regular meeting with countries around the world, you know, coming together, focusing on climate change. Um, and, and so this is the 26th COP meeting that's coming up in November. Uh, and you're going to have a panel on this discussion talking about well, what should America's role be in that discussion uh, as we look to try and lead on that. So talk a little bit about that. I mean, how do you how do you see that shaping out? Yeah, I think it's going to be another one of those areas where we, we everyone recognizes that climate change is a global issue. So but, but then sh should we be and on a world stage operating and there's some Republicans who have said we really shouldn't be part of Paris, the Paris agreements, uh, but maybe some kind of international discussion. So Where's the line on where you can, one, you know, the, our country can be effective? Obviously, you have the Biden administration leaning in heavily and saying we, we're going to be part of Paris and we're going to create aggressive targets uh, to meet uh, the, the goals by 2050. Um, and these are all, you know, so there's not an eye to eye about where we should be on this. So I think, you know, I think where the baseline is, where there's um, agreement is it's a global issue. It's a global issue. It's not just the United States. All over the world uh, has causes, has caused climate change and has effects of climate change, some more than others, without a doubt. What are we going to do? What is the, what is the right answer? And how can countries secure their interests, specifically speaking for the United States? How do we maintain and secure our interests, but also lower emissions? How do we let China continue 
to escalate uh, its pollution for another decade before having to reduce theirs while we are decreasing ours. And you know, to the EU or India or anyone else, any major players, this is, this is a big issue. Um, if the technology is advancing exponentially, and it is, do we really need to be thinking about you know, 2050 and these and these smaller goals, or does technology allow us to be more aggressive all across the nation and have some baselines all across not just the nation but the world? And these are tough, 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 and they're geopolitical discussions. Um, this is not a domestic discussion, and we'll have this here at Clean Energy Week. We'll be having that discussion, but you can bet um, come November when the the parties come together, the first is first to the 12th of November. Wow, I think there'll be a lot of discussion. I'm interested to see um, not just where the U.S. is, uh, but China is, where the EU and other major industrialized nations talk about Russia. Thinking about how uh, Republicans were engaged, I'm talking about um, a Paris agreeing it's global. How will they engage? If, it's, if not Paris, then what else? Uh, what else do they see? And I, I don't think there are clear answers there either. So. I think we'll, we'll ask some tough questions during Clean Energy Week, and then uh, we'll continue to ask those questions. Uh, how do we be thoughtful partners uh, for CRESS or your organization, Drew? How we think about you know, being thoughtful partners and supporting Republicans and Democrats to really come together and create global solutions. Uh, it's big. These are big problems, um, but ones we tackle every day. Yeah, no, that's, oh, that's great. I think uh, there's just going to be a lot to talk about next week. I'm certain that some good announcements are going to come out of it. And uh, and some solutions uh, will be developed uh, and maybe it'll take time. It certainly will take time. These things are complex as you noted, but uh, really, really um, just impressed and grateful for all your leadership uh, as a part of the Citizens for Responsible Energy Solutions and, and putting National Clean Energy Week together. Um, it's just a really important week uh, and people come at it for climate reasons. They come at it for technology, domestic supply chain, manufacturing reasons. They come at it for as you mentioned, U.S. competitive reasons. So uh, there's plenty of reasons to join. Uh, can you just remind us again, how do we participate? Sure. Uh, go to nationalcleanenergyweek.org, and there you can uh, sign up for the symposium. Uh, and all access pass is only $50 for all three days, and you can watch it recorded. You don't have to watch it live, although we'd love for you to watch it live. Uh, we There's also uh, other proclamations, information. I think there's toolkits about statistics about clean energy. Uh, if you're someone who likes to be on social media, Facebook or whatever, uh, you can you certainly tweet out and use the hashtag NCEW21. That's great. Well, uh, look, we're about out of time. Anything else you want to add before we leave? Well, just happy Clean Energy Week. You know what? Every, every year is a different uh, kind of, I think, a different kind of feel to it. I think we've got you know new Congress, new administration. Um, we're in our fifth year, and we're amidst major talks dealing with infrastructure and, and massive spending uh, in Washington. So I think we've got an exciting week, a couple of weeks ahead. If you're a policy person or like the politics, um, these next two weeks are for you for sure. Uh, but you know, I think we're doing our part with National Clean Energy Week and facilitating productive dialogue, and we hope you'll join us. That's great. Well, thank you again, uh, Heather. Really appreciate this discussion, your time, and uh, I know you're busy. You probably have to get right back to work uh, for of all the course, plans. But I, I, I really appreciate being here with you all, and it, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Well, good. Uh, so to our audience again, thank you for listening. This has been a Bright Voices interview with Heather Reams, the Executive Director of the Citizens for Responsible Energy Solutions. Uh, you can find this interview and others uh, at c3newsmag.com. And uh, please visit us there, share us on social media, and sign up for our free newsletter. Again, my name is Drew Bond with C3 Solutions, and uh, we hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.